Three, two, one. Hey, internet friend, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I'm here with Douglas. I'm going to try and say his last name. Vermeeren. Yes? Perfect. Dun, dun, dun. You nailed it. Well, Douglas, where are you located? I'm actually in Calgary, Alberta, Canada today. Canada? Yes, I'm sir. I'm sorry. We have, to, we have to cut this short. I don't think we can do Canada. No, we can do Canada. We're neighbors. I'm in Minnesota, so we border up there. Easy. Easy. No, I've been almost to Canada. I've been nine miles. I should have drove a little further and stepped across the border, but I haven't been to Canada. Well, you're always welcome. You're always welcome. We're still here. Of course. <laughs> yes. That's how they came up with the name. They go, should we start with a C, A? How about N, A? D, A? And then they came up with Canada, right? There you go. There you go. Enough of that craziness. See, let's talk about you. You're married and got kids? I am, and I've actually got some grandkids too. So I'm uh, very excited about that. In fact, the grandkids are probably the best part of the show. That's what they say. And, and the parents of the, grand, uh, the grandkids like to be able to put them off on grandma and grandpa so they can go out and have some fun. Oh, we like that. We encourage that, in fact. With a <laughs> free daycare center, right? <laughs> no problem. Anytime. Sign me up. <laughs> so how long, how many, how many you got? Kids. Sorry, you cut out there. How many kids? We got oh, three yeah, kids. How many? Yeah, three kids. They're all for sale. Uh, two boys and one girl. And then for the grandkids, we've actually got two girls and one boy. Well, there you go. You got a whole herd there. Well, we're working <laughs> on it. I don't have any. My wife's got one. He's old and off doing his own thing. So okay. it's just me and her and a puppy dog. Well, there you go. So I was looking at some of your bio and you've got some books and things. And um, now, now some of this is this, um, like it's mindset thing, because you know, a money mindset. And I'll just admit that I came from a poor family. My dad is in construction. My mom was a homemaker. And it was it's exactly like, my you, background, too. That's you exactly clean my your background. Plate. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my dad was in construction. My mom babysat kids in the home. That's exactly my background. And well, we weren't very wealthy, though. Were you wealthy? Nope. <laughs> no. Yeah. Nope, so not I, at all. I struggle with it. And here's the the example I use that ha that happens to me sometimes. You know, sometimes you use a paper clip and you use it because you want to like pick something or do something with it. So you bend it open and pick on something. Mm -hmm. What I'll do is I'll bend it back because I don't want to waste the paper clip. There you go. They're so expensive. There you go. That's a, that's a mindset thing. It's a scarcity mindset thing. And, and it's just ingrained in me from childhood that, you know, money doesn't grow on trees, you know? Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, I can totally relate. That was the background I grew up with as well. I had had me down as well into high school. Uh, I had an uncle that was just a little bit older than me. So I always got his stuff that was just a little bit too big on me. And you know, uh, I could definitely tell you, like, uh, our groceries were rationed as kids, everything. So I get it. You and I have probably a lot in common about that. So you broke three, free of it. And uh, that, that, is that somewhat what you speak about and what you share is, uh, like, mindset definitely it is. and uh, yeah. law of well, attraction kind of stuff? Definitely. But kind of what I'm known for is uh, when I was 19, still, again, in this broke mindset because I didn't know any better, uh, somebody gave me the book Think and Grow Rich. And so I decided at that point to kind of set out to do what Napoleon Hill did. And for those familiar with that book, you'll remember that he went out and he interviewed top achievers around the world and Thomas Edison, Henry Ford. I went out and I did the same thing. Now, here's where it gets very interesting. So in my first six months interviewing these top achievers, many of them, I don't know if they felt sorry for me or what, but took me under their wing, began to teach me. And um, in six months, I did $1.6 million. First time I'd ever made any kind of money on average $9,000 a day. And so kind of what happened is, as you can imagine, I had no intention to become a speaker, by the way, but I had people now knocking on my door saying, well, what did so-and-so teach you? What did so-and-so teach you? Because right. I'd gotten to so many of these top achievers. And so I started sharing that. And then ultimately I wound up on uh, Fox and CNN and everything else. And they called me the modern day Napoleon Hill. And uh, next thing you know, I decided I wanted to start, you know, writing some books and maybe making some movies because I'd always enjoyed movies. And uh, our first movie was in 2008, so quite a while ago. I've been doing these movies now for a while. And the first one, uh, you know, we had several of the people that everyone knows, Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen and Joe Vitale and all these guys. And we talked really in that about 
um, yes, the mindset, because the mindset's essential, but really how do you take a vision of what you want to do, turn it into a workable plan, and then ultimately build it so it's performance in your life. And so that was the first movie. And then the second one that I did was called The Gratitude Experiment. In fact, it was interesting out of all the um, kind of top achievers that I interviewed at the same time, as you can imagine, I was reading every success book I could get my hands on and I'm an avid reader. But I found that the success books and the seminars and most of the gurus were missing a lot of elements. Uh, again, when you go out and interview 400 of the top achievers, you start seeing some very common things. So what I discovered is most of what's taught in personal development is incomplete. And one of the big things that was incomplete was the success books talk about goal setting, time management, all these kind of things, but they never talk about gratitude. And the real total top achievers know how to practice gratitude. So we did that as the second movie called The Gratitude Experiment. And then I did a third movie on wealth and abundance. Obviously, everyone wants to know about money. I think we're going to probably end up talking a little bit about money, you and I too. Um, one of the things that I've been able to achieve through my interviews with the top achievers is I've, I've as a kid, I thought that time equaled money, right? It, it took time to make money. You, right. you work more hours, you make more money. But it's actually nothing to do with time. It's about to do with systems. And right. you know, if, if we look at the real world, uh, banking world, the financial world, they call that leveraged income. But if you look at what's now sort of the catchphrase online, they call it passive income. And so recently, because of my interviews with the world's top achievers, um, you know, right now, uh, this year, I'm doing eight figures in passive income every year. But Money Magazine just rated me as the number one passive income trainer in the world. Um, but that's not my forte. <laughs> my forte is really, you know, working with networks. And, and I believe that your network is your highest value asset because it's really those people I'm connected to that, number one, teach me what to believe, teach me what is possible, help me solve the problems that I'm faced with, and then often present the opportunities to me. So I was fortunate enough that I was, I was given that designation as, as number one passive you know, income. And then we put up the new movie too. Sometimes how we go down a certain path and the things we learn, like I'm sure you've heard the story of the, mm. the grandma that used to make the roast and you cut the ends off the roast. Yep. And then they say, why do you do that? And it's because grandma always did. You get in that path and you stay there. And when we're taught about getting a job and getting so much per hour, all we think about is either work more hours or you make yeah. more per hour. That's where we're stuck. And people used to say, time is money. And I used to think, well, if time was money, we'd all have the same amount. 24 hours in a day, we'd all have the same money, right? And it doesn't work that way. It, not a, I think not just close. getting <laughs> out of that concept of a, of a defined 24 hours in a day and yeah. X amount per hour, you can get out of that. I'll share a quick story. Years ago, I used to work uh, do printed circuit boards for control data. And they had a computer cool. board. You put it in this way, it worked great. You put it in this way. It fried the computer. So mm. all I did as a draftsman was changed a part number for a screw and made it a little bit longer. Okay. It was a 003 to a 004. And now you put it in, it doesn't go in because it hits. So you got to turn it this way, then mm. it slid past the guide. So that change that took me literally seconds to do saved millions of dollars. So how could that be equated to time worth money? Thing. Yeah. Well, you, you know, again, uh, time is, is never money. It, it is the systems. And in fact, even beyond the systems, I think one of the other things is, is your associations, right? In fact, there's something that I teach in our programs. Like I teach a program about how to network with higher people. Like how did I get the top thought leaders in my movie? How did I get the top thought leaders uh, helping me writing endorsements for my books or forwards or whatever? How did I get the top business leaders to mentor me? So that's kind of what I teach. How do you access these top people. And one of the things that, uh, that I think is really important is that if you're looking at entrepreneurs or even people who are looking to, you know, they're self-employed or in a job, they generally ask questions like, what can I do? Or how can I do it? Or what's the first step? Or give me a checklist. And they're asking either what or how questions. But if you look at the high level influencers, they never ask what or how, they actually ask who. And I think it's a better question. So in other words, who can do this for me? Who do I know who can open this door? Who can build a system here? Who can do? So you're always on a constant mission to replace yourself rather than dedicate more hours. And I think that's just a really big mind shift compared to what most people are thinking about. Like the employee mind, mind shift is I got to come in early tomorrow to do this, or I got to stay late, or I got to even meet more clients or whatever it is. But, you know, uh, even when I go to networking events now, like at the low level, people are typically going to look for someone to sell something to, right? Like who will buy my stuff trading from business me? That's cards. Yeah, trading business cards. 
But when I go to a networking event, the way that high level people do it is we're not looking for customers. We're looking for people who have our customers. So I'm looking for someone with a, a massive Rolodex of my people. I don't want to do onesies and twosies. If you want to become extremely wealthy, you've got to now start thinking, what are the shortcuts, right? What are the ways to hit critical mass faster? And I think that that's something that's missing for a lot of people. Like, they don't, like they don't the look at it that way. Kind of thing. You, well, like yeah, the there's one way, kind of thing, yeah Rolodex. one way to look at it. Well, that's it. Well, Harvey McKay once said that that's, that's your business's greatest asset, asset is your Rolodex. And I agree yeah. with that. Uh, what they say, uh, your sum total ends up being the, the sum of the five people you hang around with or something like that. 100%. Yeah, definitely. Because if you think about it, if a person's going, okay, I'm going to do this project and I got to raise $100,000. So I got to do this fundraiser, see if you can get some people to donate and try and sell some stuff. Or you could know somebody that knows somebody that says, I got $100,000, I'll give it to you. Yeah. Yeah, that's possible. And, and, if you, and, and if you do need to do the fundraiser, what you got to do is you got to ask, who do I know that's done a fundraiser like this? Who do I know that's raised this kind of money before? And, you know, that, that just did. I mean, the, the, how do we say our network we've heard is our net worth. I get that. But our network, even more importantly, is your safety net, right? The, the higher the level of the network that you have, the higher the caliber of problems that you can solve. And so I think that this is, again, one thing where a lot of people are lacking. Like we're talking about our latest movie, How Thoughts Become Things. A question that everybody asks me, how do you level up your thinking? Well, the first step is, is obviously you'd be aware of what you're thinking currently. And now you look at who you're hanging around because you're right. You are the combination of the five people you spend the most time with. And so if you want to level up who you are, the easiest way to do it isn't to work hard here. It's to start surrounding yourself with people who will lift you. So together you go as a team. They're your influences. They're going to be what brings in. And uh, I think, you know, the problem with most people is their greatest influence is the TV, the internet, the music they listen to, the radio. They, they don't put themselves with real people who can lift them to a higher degree. And they're, they're really just gravitating at the common. And that's, that's where the danger that's is. It's interesting in that um, there's this friend of mine that came with these question cards that are kind of like affirmations, but they put the who, what, where, when, how, or why in front of it. When you ask okay. the question, instead of like, I am a millionaire, it says like, why am I a millionaire? And then yeah. your brain starts thinking differently. So like the sign. Well, you got to find, you gotta you find your like, willpower. You got to find your, your why power before you'll find your willpower. And you know what? It's funny that Simon... Uh, he's been talking about that for a couple of years, but I was talking about finding your why way back when we did our first movie, The Opus. So, yeah, I was going to uh, say, instead of what's your why, it's what's your who. Well, exactly. <laughs> but even then, the idea of, how, of, uh, of why, we've been teaching that for years and years and years. It's nothing new with some of the gurus they're talking about now. I've always said, again, you've got to find your why power before you'll find your willpower. Because if you, if you don't have any emotional connection to, uh, again, going back to thoughts become things, uh, if you've got, like, we've got thoughts all day long. In fact, Harvard said once there was a study done that said that the average person has six ideas that could become a million dollar enterprise every single year. So why isn't everyone a millionaire? Well, it's because they haven't really found a why. They haven't emotionally connected to that idea until they get ticked off when they're walking in a store and they see that someone else put out what they were thinking about years ago, right? right. Like, that was my you know, idea. They're, they're late to the table. That was my idea, right? So someone chose to do something about it. Someone didn't. And I think the universe is that way. Wherever there's a problem, I think multiple people are given the solution at any given time, right? But maybe one or two will act on it, maybe, right? And I think even, like, I act on a lot of stuff, but I think I leave some cogs out of the machine. Yeah. I'm, I'm a visionary, so oftentimes I'll go from concept to implementation. And I forget mm -hmm. about putting a bridge between there. And then your average person doesn't know, what are you talking about? We ain't going way over there. There's a big ditch in the way. No, there isn't. I'm seeing this possibility. And they're kind of like, no, there's a chasm there. We'll die. So they don't yeah. want to talk about the big vision because I haven't explained it to them. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, the other thing that we see working with a lot of entrepreneurs too is you've got visionaries who are really, really good at coming up with ideas, but they're just really crummy implementers. And so that's where this idea also of your network is so important because uh, we all need to recognize that all great and grand things come through collaboration. Nothing amazing has ever been accomplished by a single individual. If you look at climbing Mount Everest or Edmund Hillary had a team, 
be able to look at Neil Armstrong on the moon. He had people, you know, he didn't build it in his garage. He had people working on, on all, all those things that were needed. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with an, an Olympian. And there's been many gold medal Olympians that I've interviewed and all of them have had fitness trainers, nutrition, train, nutrition trainers, people who had sponsored them and blah, blah, blah. The list goes on and on. So you really need to understand if you're going to go far, if you're going to go high, you need to have, understand the principle of collaboration. You know, I used to have this, uh, I'm an independent kind of guy. And then one day mm -hmm. I had this epiphany realizing that I, it's impossible to be independent because you need somebody to be independent of. Fair so I had this realize that, oh my God, I need to have somebody else. I can't be by myself because <laughs> I need other people to implement with. So it's definitely true. I totally get it. This is very fun because this is a lot has been, it's been on my mind just recently because I'm working on a couple of, of projects and they're, they're outside of my scope of things. So I need to find mm -hmm. the people that know the people to be able to implement the whole thing. Interesting. The, the, way that I, the, the way that I kind of run things too in my life, and I know this may sound a little bit cheeky, um, but people ask me, what do you do for a living? And my answer is as little as possible. And that's the, that's the way that, that wealthy people think. We're not looking to build jobs or activities for ourselves. We're looking to find the best people who can do this so that we can focus on our area of brilliance. In fact, um, one of my mentors, as I was doing the interviews with the top 400 achievers, uh, introduced me to something called the funnel effect. And he said that most people live their life like a big funnel, right? And they figure if they meet more people, if they learn more, if they do more, if they spend more hours, if they spend more money, if they do blah, 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 they're going to get more. But the truth is they get less. And the way that top achievers actually do it is they turn the funnel upside down so the spout is at the top. And it's not that they do less necessarily, but they put boundaries around what they do and they do significantly better. So they're very focused, they're niche, they know what they're doing and they don't waste time doing all kinds of trivial stuff. And in the end, because they do that, they get better. And, and, and I guess, you know, as I was talking about in the beginning, you know, a lot of the stuff that I learned with the top 400 achievers is directly at odds with a lot of what the gurus are saying. A lot of the gurus right now are telling you that if you want to become successful, you need to get out of your comfort zone. And that doesn't work. That doesn't work. It never has. That's a jack. Hustle. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. They're telling you to grind and hustle, wake up at 5 a.m., go to bed really late, but they're not telling you what to do, right? So to me, it, it speaks of a high level of ignorance on their part. They don't know what success really looks like. Success isn't doing more. It never has been. It's about increasing your productivity. So if we're looking leverage. again at this, it's leverage. If we're looking at this idea of your comfort zone, the truth is, is we hire people to do the things we're not comfortable with. What we need to exactly. do is step into our brilliance zone, right? That's the zone you got to focus on. What are you really good at? What can you do better than anyone else? What is the gift that you have? What gets you fired up? What makes you feel validated? How can you serve others best? And the minute that you feel that connection of your brilliant zone, delegate the rest. I don't care. Like I don't do, for example, my own dental work. <laughs> I don't do my own hair cutting. I don't do my own taxes. There's so many things I don't do, but I do focus on the things I love and the things I'm really good at. And then that's what has made me a fortune. So you really need to understand what that is for you. The, the automate and delegate kind of thing. Well, yeah, and there's only two systems that you can use and that is it. It's automate or delegate. Those are your only two choices. So we were gonna talk a little bit about money. Um, to, <laughs> me, <laughs> to me, money is just a byproduct of energy. It's just it is you, you do work and you get, it's just a, a tool for measuring we're going to give you this many units because you work this many minutes. And I'm going to disagree though. It, it isn't really that. It isn't, a, it isn't an exchange like that. You know, no one ever looks at how many minutes you work and gives you money for that. It really looks at the value that you've created in the marketplace. Well, right? what I meant was that it's a, it's a measurement tool. Fair enough. So that's why yeah, fair enough. They've got dollars and $5 and it's just a measurement tool of energy because really it's just paper. Yeah. And if you look well, at I, what's a hundred dollar bill worth, yeah. Well, I think what it's really measuring, if you think about it, it's measuring how well you've built a system that provides value. So again, it's, it's nothing to do with the hours. It's nothing to do with the time. Because if you built a system, again, you're using the words automate and delegate. That's perfect. Like, I really am glad that you mentioned that because that, that's what a system is. So money rewards you on your ability to build the ability to delegate or automate and remove yourself from the equation, but still provide the transaction in a high level. So if you can learn how to do that, you can also learn how to scale because it's no longer attached to you, right? You can, you can right. go bigger than, than what you can possibly do on your own. And I think that this is a big d danger for a lot of people who are, you know, they claim they're entrepreneurs, but they're really self-employed, <laughs> right? They're, they're really grinding away. They're the ones, they have to be there for every client meeting. They have to 
authorize and, and, and make everything happen. And as soon as you do that, you really, you become the cog in the wheel becomes the clog in the wheel, right? <laughs> you're the one that slows everything down for you. And there's no way you can become wealthy if you're doing it all yourself. That's the ball and chain. It's like, uh, I had an, an ex business partner and his, when we got together for this business it was the expo business. He mm. was looking for a job. So we built a company that paid him a good salary. I wanted mm. the freedom. I wanted to build something. I want to step away from it and automate and delegate. That's what I want to do. So it didn't work because we had the, wasn't Different lined dynamics. up properly. Yeah. And that's just it. He's working, 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 working. And I wanted to be able to hit the coffee shop or go walk around a lake or something. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, th these are all things that are learnable. This is the good news though, right? Like, so if you're listening to this right now and you're like, I'd like to kind of get more freedom. I'd like to have that escape. It's learnable. And I'm going to suggest that quite frankly, I know we talked a little bit about this, but it really does all start with your thoughts. For me, that's kind of what happened when I was uh, the 19 year old young man. Uh, I came in with a certain set of programming, if you will, that I got from not only my parents, but their parents, because that's how they trained them and the environment I was in and the social community and the belief systems. And so I came in thinking time for money. just like what we talked about. But as soon as I became aware of my programming and maybe even more important, recognize I had choices that I didn't have to live according to that programming that I had, that here's the deal is if, uh, you know, one time I remember reading the newspaper and it had in there uh, the salaries of Oprah Winfrey, Donald Trump, uh, the CEO of Pepsi, the CEO of Deutsche Bank, the CEO of Coke, and a variety of other companies. You could just see it. It broke it down as to how much they made per day. And I can't remember exactly how much it was, but as you can imagine, it was an astronomical amount. And um, when I was reading that, in my old self, it was like, wow, I admire them. But my new self is, why not me? Like if someone else has figured this out, right? Why not me? And I think that this again goes back to our thoughts is that we can determine and we can dictate which thoughts we will allow to prosper. Now, that's not to say that you have a really good thought. Let's call it a high level thought. Anytime we have a thought almost immediately behind it, just because we're human, immediately come doubt, fear, challenge, question, everything. They, they come hand in hand, they come together, but then it really comes down to which voice will you give more power to? And whichever one you choose to attach emotion to is the one that's going to thrive. So if you pick the emotion that says, I can do it, and you give that or that thought, uh, if you give it emotion, it's going to be the one that thrives. If you say, this is who I am, and I believe in it, and I get wholeheartedly, it'll thrive. But if you choose the one that's the doubt, and you say, this feels more comfortable, that's where I'm going to direct my emotion, it will extinguish this in a heartbeat. You'll have nothing. So that's where it helps to get around those people so you don't have the naysayers going, I don't know, that looks kind of risky. You might... Uh... You got to look somewhere. Yeah. That's a great idea. I think that could work. It yeah. No, it, it, it makes a big, big difference. And in fact, uh, you know, it, it, it's interesting that at the beginning, I think for, for someone who's not really thought about this, you just kind of believe who you hang out with, right? And with them, they say, no, okay, I get you. you with them, they say, yes, yes, okay. And you kind of really are a reflection of every comment that you hear, right? Maybe this comment today because you're with these people, that comment tomorrow. And so I think as you graduate sort of in your understanding and your awareness, you start to recognize which ones are serving you. And so when you're with these people that say, no, 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 you can say, thanks for your opinion, but I'm not going to take it. Or with, with these people that say, yes, you can say, I see how that's possible. Right. And we can start consciously making a decision as far as which voices inside and outside we're going to listen to. And I think that's really important. Well, speaking of time, I don't really like do this too long. <laughs> I kind of keep them kind We're of short. We're having fun though, aren't we? We are, but uh, we can do it again. I, I love, I love to. doing these things. It's fun connecting and it gets you thinking. You know, if I'm talking to you, if I'm talking to somebody that's got issues, I'd rather talk with you. <laughs> Those are issues. I don't need that. But um, that, that's how I do this, this uh, video and how I promote it. I take advantage and use the automation of the internet. So yeah. I just post it once. Instead of you know sharing it with Steve and Becky and Sharon and Mary and I don't waste my time doing that. I just put yeah. it out there and let the internet find it. <laughs>
So I'm going to cut this one short, but before I do that, can you share how do we get a hold of you? How do we learn about the movies and the books? And the Yeah, stuff? well, I think and, probably, yeah, thank you for asking. The best place to go is it's just straight to www.howthoughtsbecomethings, howthoughtsbecomethings.com, and that will give you access to the movie. Uh, speaking of books and stuff right now, if you head over and, and take a look at the movie, we've got actually a workbook that we give you for free with that and a quote book with some of the thoughts from the film and also some thoughts that were beyond the film that we weren't able to package in there and and you can come and pick that up so head over to howthoughtsbecomethings.com and again if you like me personally just type in my name douglas vermeer in a great place we've got tons of free resources i love what you said about the internet will find it we put a bunch of videos on youtube that's where we hope you'll find us and if you obviously get our vibe become our tribe if you like what we do follow us and um there's lots of great stuff we'd love to share. Uh, one of the things that we're talking a lot about on our trainings lately is really how to level up that network. And I think that that's an important and essential part of uh, anybody's life and business. So join us. If you dig the vibe, join the tribe. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time and I'm going to get this up. I'll get it done in about an hour because I don't waste any time. I oh, well, good for you. Okay. <laughs> that's awesome. Hit it hard. Okay. Well, look forward to chatting. Okay, thanks again. Let's do this again. Take care. Peace.